Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS uh, HPC organization. Uh, today, I'm really excited to be joined by uh, a couple of folks from Singapore. Uh, my colleague Austin Cherian on the developer advocacy team. Hello. Hey Austin. Um, and Hi. also, um, uh, uh, Associate Professor Swain Chen uh, from the National University of Singapore who's also a group leader in the bacterial genomics at the Genomics Institute of Singapore. Hey, Swain. Hello. Uh, nice so, to be here. So you guys are actually running, you're going to be running some workshops uh, in October and December of 2021. Uh, I'm putting the, the, the year in there in case somebody's watching this, uh, watching this show in the future. Uh, could you please send back the lotto numbers if you are? Um, and uh, so you guys are running a couple of workshops. Now those workshops, these workshops are aimed at people who are taking their first steps into the cloud for, for their bioinformatics workloads. Those bioinformaticians that are already able to do stuff, right? We're aiming it at people who already know how to use the command line. A, a few years ago at the Genome Institute of Singapore, you know, we had our own cluster, we had our own storage that we were running on, on premises. And it was just clear as that hardware was aging, uh, it was, as it was costing more to, to keep up with compute power and, and increasing data, it was clear that we were going to either have to refresh that, that cluster uh, and possibly add on some additional capacity by going into the cloud. So my lab was one of the first ones that was sort of leading the charge in terms of figuring out how to use the cloud. And as part of that, then we designed this training to take it back to our colleagues within GIS, the ones that were already using the, the cluster that was on premises, and basically give them the tools, get over those barriers that you just talked about, right? Whether it's vocabulary or what's the architecture and how do you actually get these machines up and running? How do you deal with billing and, and just make sure that you're not gonna, you know, suddenly have a huge bill at the end of the month. Those are the kinds of things that we're helping out to, with this training. And we're setting it in the context of, you know, existing bioinformatic workflows that you might be familiar with. So you can sort of see how you can get a machine up and running and just, you know, pretty quickly have a workflow going that's similar to what you've got either on your laptop or on your workstation or your on-premises cl uh, cluster. That space between a single workstation or supercomputer, you know, moving to the cloud, actually, I think, you know, what we're trying to do is make it feel like, just relate that to how you're running things on your workstation right now. But by making that transition into the cloud, it's automatically going to give you that scale very easily to, to really advance what you can do uh, in terms of scale and power and speed and cost, and, and maybe actually help you get to that supercomputer stage. The sysadmins, for us, you know, now they kind of manage the overall account for AWS. We still have an on-premises cluster, but the sysadmins now manage the overall AWS account. But you know, now it's very clear that we manage the software ourselves for each of the different groups. And you know, it, it's just very easy with the cloud infrastructure to make a common installation that then can be replicated across everyone that wants to use it. Right, and, you, and, you, and to, to actually achieve that, you've built a really cool army that's packed with goodness. That's right, the AMI that we actually use as an example in that workshop, it's the same AMI that I'm using every day. It's the same AMI that the people in my group are using to actually get their work done. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the things um, we've, I've documented all the things that went into kind of setting the machine up, starting with the base uh, AMI, uh, it, it, for us, it's Ubuntu, right? So starting with the base Amazon Ubuntu image uh, and then doing all the basic sysadmin, getting the basic software set up. And then there's a whole section on all the bioinformatics software that we put in. So this page that you're seeing here right now is kind of just the basic stuff. The basic stuff meaning, you know, doing all the system updates and installing some of the sort of core software. So there's that general system update that gives you some hints about setting up your environment, right? Setting up your bash environment and your, you know, your editors and, and you know, authentication, stuff like this. There's, there's all this kind of basic stuff, which, um, you know, I think a, a lot of people know how to do, but it, it's all over the place. And, you know, you don't set up a new machine all the time, right? Yeah. So, uh, but since we were doing this and, you know, now everyone's kind of got their own machine. So it's you've collected it all yeah. here and you've used GitHub to actually document it, but this army that's, that's right. got all this goodness is available. So that, that 
That's just right. To, just to call that this out. Is just know, this, what's is, been ha- this is just what's been installed in that AMI. Yeah. And this is this is a really, really good way for people to actually know what's been installed. And, and I kind of mm-hmm. like the analogy of the new car. Does it have a new car smell, by the way? Um, <laughs> Not anymore, because all this stuff has been done. <laughs> you can tell. You can always tell the new car from from what the bash prompt looks like, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very true. And, and, so it's and I think one of the yeah one of the comments I'd like to make over here is that uh, you know it's I see this as twofold in terms of the advantages that people get. One is that you know you have a rich set of tools that uh, they normally would use, and they have, there's now one place to go and get it. The other aspect is that we've actually compressed all of the sysadmin activity that they normally would do, right? So it's actually a twofold multiplier effect that they actually get by using the army, basically. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. All right, so yeah, really, we- hopefully this would be helpful to people if they grow out of the tools that we have installed here and they need to make their own AMI, right? That here's what's been done. So you can replicate that yourself. Um, yeah, and so all these things are installed on the, um, the AMI. And it's, it, for my group, it's targeted at bacterial genomics. So there's a lot of you know, assembly and kind of variant calling tools and, and they're re- related to bacterial genomics. But maybe if we could uh, scroll down to the Kraken 2 section, you know, just, just, just to highlight a couple of things here that you know, the software is just a bit different for bioinformatics, and there's a large diversity, as I said. So, you know, for example, one of the things that is a little bit complicated about setting up Kraken, it, it, especially if you were, if you're someone who can use a command line and you're just starting off in bioinformatics, um, trying to get your head around all these tools can can be a little bit challenging because they're all different, right? They're all written with kind of different philosophies and, and as I said, by different people. And so one of the big things here is that the software itself is easy to install and you can sort of see it's just a few commands. It's, it's pretty standard, mm-hmm. but then you've got to get the libraries, right? You've got to get these custom databases and yeah. they can be kind of big as well. And it takes a long time to download. And one of the really nice things about Am- the Amazon AMI and, you know, infrastructure to launch instances is automatically it's going to come with all these databases. I've installed them here and you can sort of see that bottom line just sort of tells you where the databases are installed. This is, this, is one of the, this is one of the things that I love about working in this cloud environment uh, with researchers. When, when you solve a problem, it stays solved, and then mm-hmm. somebody else can go and build on top of that. You guys have solved this problem in a really comprehensive way. You use this workshop as a method for actually just storing instructions for the people in your lab to be able to spin stuff up and spin it down. And people in my group... They don't have to remember sometimes like, you know, where to Google for this or that. They, they just know they can come here as like, oh, yeah, I need to set up new storage. Here's some of the considerations I need to take into account. Right. And it's a it's a brief overview of, oh, yeah, I got to I got to check on that and that. And I think it's- OK, so I've just got this AMI spun up. It's it's exactly the one that we're going to use in the training, uh, you know, and it just a lot of what happens in, in that website is like I give you some insight into how I actually use these machines. One thing that if you don't already do this, I would recommend you always use screen, right? And that's installed so you can um, go back and forth. It, it, it's, it's a little bit um, unclear what's going on, but I'm just switching between some virtual terminals. So we'll run a couple of things. So one of the things is it makes it really easy to interact with the public databases. So what we'll do is we'll just run a quick analysis right now using something that can be, can be a little bit hard to get set up. As I mentioned, you know, we talked about Kraken 2, right, and getting those databases uh, all together. So I'm just going to download um, a data set from uh, basically from the European um, nucleotide archive. So let's see. Yeah, as, as, as this is downloading, you'll see that this is yet another thing that there's just all these little things that you got to get set up in order to have a functioning workstation. And one mm-hmm. of the things in order to do fast downloads is this ENA, like to use this ASCP um, protocol to do the downloads, which allows you to sort of do this in parallel and, and really opens up the bandwidth. And, and getting the authentication to work with this, it's basically all set up already for you. And so you can see here, you've got this... Um, this uh, data set, this FastQ data set. Uh, so uh, Kraken 2 is installed. Um, if you go back to that website, it'll, it'll sort of show you where the, the Microsoft is. So we can just run this. Uh, and 
No. And what I'm going to do now is because I've got screen running, uh, I can already just go to a, a different yeah. terminal, right? And, you know, again, I'd really encourage you to use yeah, screen. Yeah, screen is fantastic. Uh, for, right? So, so this is still running. I'm basically pushing this into the background and we can do something else. So let's just do another thing where we'll do a salmonella analysis, right? And so, again, this is the program that we just talked about, Seek Zero. So, um, uh, so there's nothing in here. And what I'm going to do is I've got this link copied here for... Uh, a particular data set. This is just an assembly that I'm downloading from GenBank. Okay, and so we can GM zip this thing. Oop. And you know, there's, again, this is the AMI that we use. There's a bunch of utilities that I've written. So uh, you could take a look at this assembly um, and it's got something like this. So I've got like some uh, custom, uh, custom scripts like, so uh, this is just a script that sort of gives me the link and I can sort of see what's going on um, in terms of how many contexts there are. Maybe that's not as useful, but I'll get this other script where I can just get the N50. It'll go through and take a look. So this looks like a pretty decent assembly, N50 length of 770 KB. And so if you've got this assembly, I happen to know this is a, a salmonella isolate, but one of the things that would be really common uh, for a bacterial genomics person is you've, you've got data set, you assembled the thing, let's call some MLSTs, let's call some resistance genes. So uh, there's um, some of these tools that are uh, installed here already. So there's this tool, this great tool called Abricate. <laughs> and and not to mention that, you know, if you, if you hit the, 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 the issue that uh, a lot of, uh, you know, folks face is that if they hit a wall in terms of some dependencies that they, they just can't get over, it, they're just going to look at, you know, kind of wasting hours or days and then finally, you know, kind of ask a friend and then get, you know that going and that's the brilliance of you know having you know something like this because you know it's all there it all of the work has been done and then you just have to you know just get started with uh, your science essentially which is pretty yeah, cool. I, <clears throat> what you've done here is you have removed the most incredible amount of undifferentiated heavy lifting for your bioinformatics community yeah that's you know that's the ami we built this is the software that we use on a daily basis so um we have to get the software running. Like I, I know how this stuff works and I've got it running on this AMI. So you shouldn't have to do it yourself. Newton said that if he'd seen further, it was by standing on the shoulders of others. So, so you're yeah. one of those others that's, that's building, building the next thing for the next, uh, the next person to come along and make a great discovery with. Thank you for building this stuff, using it, uh, getting some good science done, which I know you have, and sharing it with the entire community. It's a really, really smart move. If, if you're watching this video in October uh, or November 2021, these workshops are, there's a, there's a workshop going on at the end of October. I think it's on October 27 and 28. It's a two day workshop, uh, two half days, right? That's okay. right. So this one's going to be in the afternoon to try to catch some of Europe. And we'll push that a little bit further into the uh, later in the day, Singapore time. So we can hopefully get some of the people in the Americas. Brilliant. Okay. So, <clears throat> So if you're watching uh, and you want to get involved in one of these workshops, they're hands-on and they're interactive. If you're watching this after those workshops have already gone to air, um, the workshops are going to be on, they are going to be recorded and put up on YouTube somewhere, right? And and the but the content of the workshop, the really the, the really important bits, all of that documentation that you guys are using on a daily basis is all online. It's at this URL here. This will redirect you to that website. Uh, what else is there to say apart from maybe thank you? No, thank you for thank you for giving us a chance to talk about this stuff. It is it is really yeah. cool stuff to talk about. So so it's not hard at all. Um, the last thing I'll say is for everybody else out there that's watching, uh, if you've got ideas about stuff that you'd like to see us do uh, on future tech shorts, if you've got uh, topics you want to see us deep dive into. Please DM us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, come find us and tell us what you want to see us see us do some coverage of, uh, and we'll do our best to get uh, some of the world's experts involved to to, to talk about that. Bye. Bye.